everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in making this St. Vitus bracelet a nice cathedral look to those stained glass windows. If you need any of the materials, you can check below me in the description to get your evas as well as your tublets and some crystals to go along with us. So we're going to begin by using two needles. I have two needles on some thread here and I have white wildfire beading thread in 0 0.006, about five to six inches of that thread. I have a cup button here in the Jet AB Fool, it has that nice kind of iridescence and we'll play up with that. What I'm gonna do to begin is grab some of my 11 OC beads and I'm using the Toho Perma Finish Cool Gray, very close to the Miyuki Hematite color too, if you have that. And I'm gonna add in three of my crystals, or I'm sorry, three of my seed beads. Add those and make sure you have the same amount of thread on both sides basically of the needle. So you're dropping down these three seed beads to the very end of the thread. And then you're gonna put on your button so that it is dome down with a thread coming out through the top. From there, coming out the back of your button, go ahead and add two 11s to both the right needle and two 11s to the left needle. Let those also go down to the button. Go ahead and grab out your crystals, and I have the Potomac Crystal Rounds in the two millimeter in that blue Zircon color. We are going to crisscross through, which is gonna be a theme, through that blue Zircon two millimeter round. We're gonna go one needle from right to left and the other from left to right. Again, here you wanna make sure that as you pull your thread down, that you have the same amount of thread on either side, basically, of your hand, and you're going through. That's how we're going to go and put on our clasp. And now we're going to start in our pattern with our tublets and our Eva beads. After the crystal, on the right, you're going to add three 11 OC beads. And on the left, you're going to add three 11 OC beads. We're going to then go into our tublet. And I've already added it on the left side. And what I'm going to do is cross the needle from the right towards the left and have the needles crisscross through the tublet. So you have one thread going through from right to left and the other from left to right. Got to pull that down and that's gonna give you a nice space for the loop to fit in on the clasp. Now we're gonna add in our first Eva beads. The Eva beads are gonna point outward and leave an opening in the middle for our tublets to sit. We're gonna decorate the exterior of the Eva beads, taking your needle through the first one from the open side towards the V side and I have my right needle in my hand. And the pattern on the outside of the Eva beads is gonna be 111 0 again that Toho in the um, cool gray, then two 15 OC beads, and I have Miyuki in the metallic blue there, and the metallic variegated blue, a one of my crystals, and then again those crystals are the Potomac crystals in the two millimeter, and then another one of my 11 OC beads. So you can see the pattern here, 11 two 15s, a crystal two 15s and an 11. That's gonna sit pretty well right on top of the Eva as we bring the needle back through the second hole of the Eva towards the center and give a nice little tight pull so you don't see any extra thread exposed. When you do with, when you work with two needles, it's usually a mirror image. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, picking up a next Eva bead going through from the interior towards the exterior. Go ahead and pick up your pattern of 111, two 15s, one crystal, two 15s, one 11, and back through the Eva bead. Not getting the other thread tangled in as you do this. As you pull down then, you have those Eva beads sitting kind of right across from one another with that tublet right in the middle. From here, we're gonna add another tublet, again, crossing through from right to left. So I know it's a lot of thread here. So we're gonna add the next tublet again, crossing from one going from right to left, the other left to right. Pull that thread down and let that tublet go in right next to lock in the Eva beads in place. So there we have kind of the first of the design with the Eva beads just getting locked right in there, creating kind of those rows. When you're coming out of our first 
of our two or our second tubelet rather, we're going to start that X pattern. If your Eva beads are sitting a little wonky and not straight, don't worry as we add the tubelet coming back down the sides, they'll sit and they'll cooperate. In between our design is when we're going to go in and create that nice kind of uh, crystal X. So coming out from the right hand side, I want you to add a 15 and two crystals. Left hand side, 15 and one crystal. And that second crystal that I added on the right hand side is going to be our bead that we crisscross through to get kind of that floral look. So that second crystal from the right gets crossed through with the left hand side, just like we're going to be doing constantly with those two blitz. So it's always going to happen kind of with the middle crystal as well as through with the two blitz. That's going to create a little V design there to sit in between. And then same thing kind of coming out, you're going to repeat doing the opposite. We have our crystal and then our 15 -0. both with the left needle and the right needle. And then we get to crisscross again. This time when we crisscross again, it's going to be through our tubelet. And then we're going to continue on adding in the rows of the tubelets and the evas and the crystal crosses in between. When you pull this down, you can see that first one kind of established to get that first row going. So I have my crystal, I have my evas. Again, if they're sitting a little bit off, don't worry about it. We'll come back down through the sides as we add in our extra cylinders and they'll sit and cooperate for us. So I ended up with nine of my little kind of cathedral windows there in the St. Vitus bracelet. And what I want to do is make my loop for my clasp to go through. So to make the loop, I'm coming out of the last of my tubelet beads here. And you may need, if you do need a little bit more length, um, a tenth little window here. So keep that in mind. Coming out here, I'm going to add in a little bit of my design. So I have a couple more 15 O's to pour out. And you can choose whether or not you want to do your loop with crystals, if you want to do 15s, if you want to do 11 O's, that's up to you. I'm going to make my loop both crystals and seed beads. So coming out on the right hand side, I'm going to add two 15s. Then I'm going to add one, I'm sorry, one 11 and then one crystal. I'm gonna let that drop down next to the project and then pick up the other side of the needle. We're gonna add two 15s, an 11, and then we're gonna go through the crystal the same direction. So both thread and needle are coming out through that same two millimeter crystal, going through the same way. Give a little tight pull here. And you can see that creates just a little bit of a Y right after the tubelet. From here, you're gonna pick up one of your needles. It doesn't matter if it's the right or the left. And you're gonna make a loop that's big enough for your button to go through. So again, if you want to do a 15-11 combo, you can do a 15-11 crystal combo. The only thing to make sure of is you, if you are really rough on wear and tear of your bracelet, keep in mind that that crystal is going to be behind the button and get a little bit of use. So again, I have a 15 and 11 crystal and then I'll downgrade 11, 15. And I'll add another 15 and start that pattern over again. So I have 15, 11, crystal, 11, and then basically two 15s to start the pattern over again. So you can make the loop as detailed as you want, as simple as you want up to you for the loop for that clasp. Also a great use and design that I love for the clasp is actually to do peyote stitch for the clasp as well. If you are using a metal clasp, I would suggest using a wire guard to attach to that metal clasp and you would be attaching that at the same point. After you have the appropriate number of beads on, we are going to reinforce this loop with the other thread. So remember we have one more thread kind of sitting out here and we're going to use that other thread to help us reinforce. So we'll see whether or not my loop is big enough. I have one more rotation that I need to do. Let's see if we 
we got it yet. And it's gonna be big enough for my loop to sit in. With the thread and needle that's in your hand, come back through the crystal and go down through the 11 and the 215s and out. Give a nice tight little pull. And then again, go back into the project with the other needle. Reinforce going through all of those seed beads and a crystal combo that you just added. Making sure as you're doing this that you don't skip any beads. Every once in a while I'll skip a bead and I get to the end and I think, oh no, I can see my thread going over from hopping over one bead to the other. So make sure that you're catching on to all of your beads and that you don't have any extra thread showing. Once you finish that loop, you wanna make sure that you're coming down the opposite side, going through the crystal, the 11, and the 215s after the 11 and out. Again, see that little loop that's created? You wanna make sure to go in and kind of pull on that, that extra thread. Make sure your loop, just do a kind of final check, make sure the loop is big enough for the button to fit through. And now we're gonna come back down the design and add in our crystals and our tubelets along the edges to connect our little stained glass windows here of our cathedral. So I've gone down two of the left side so you can, or the right side rather, so you can see the beads in place, adding in an extra 11 and the tubelet. And the right hand side does the same thing as I'm gonna do with the left. So you're gonna go in and hop from the exterior there by adding four of your 15 OC beads. You're gonna go up through all the seed beads on the exterior here of the Eva, through the crystal, down through the seed beads on the other side, and as you exit the 11 O seed bead, you're gonna pick up another 11 O, another tubelet, and another 11 O. Go into the seed beads on the other, or on the next Eva, the ones that sit right on top, and go the whole way down through. So it's really simple coming down the project, adding in that next layer of our tubelet beads by adding in those additional 15 or I'm sorry, 11, tubelet 11, through all the crystals and go down through on both sides, adding in that nice connection for our windows. So coming out the end of my bracelet here, I have my last tubelet that I'm putting in place and I'm going up through the end. And just like we did on the other side, we're going to basically connect the outer seed beads here from the last of my Eva beads to my clasp and work on reinforcing my clasp. Coming down the seed beads there on the end, you're gonna bring your thread and needle and connect it to the three seed beads there. So go ahead and pick up your four 15s, just like we done on the other side. And after I kind of clean up my mat and gather up my four 15s here, I'm gonna go through the seed beads and use this thread and needle that's in my hand right now to reinforce the loop. So I've actually already gone through um, and done that with the first thread to come down and show kind of that nice design and how that lays out really, really pretty along the piece. And you can go in and in the, full, the fun thing is with a lot of these different pieces, you can go in and add to the middle if you want to. You can crisscross with bigger crystals. You can add a whole nother row. I decided to keep it open because I really wanted kind of that stained glass look. But I'm gonna go in and reinforce the clasp going through the crystal there, going up through the seed beads. When you go through, if you are using a cup button, at the same time going through the first hole of the cup button, try to catch on to that seed bead there on top of the cup button. Go through both beads and down through the cup button. Because of the curvature of the cup button, it's easier to do these things all at once. When you come down the other side, go ahead and go through those two seed beads before the crystal. And bringing the thread out, you have the option now to do a little tie if you want, tying the two thread ends together, right over left, left over right, and ending that thread end. All you'll have to do then is you can weave one back through, burn the edge of the thread down, and your bracelet is nice and complete. Like I said, if you want to, you can go in and actually add in some extra crystals along here, kind of do more Xing, add in a whole nother row of tubelets, and make it your own with the design. Again, I ended up using a total of eight of my windows. My bracelet fits pretty large on me, so, or I'm sorry, nine of my windows. The bracelet's pretty large. I probably could have gotten away with about eight. So you're gonna need between eight and 10 windows to depending on that size of your wrist.
Thanks so much for watching the St. Vitus bracelet. Remember, if you want to make one, you can kind of change up exactly what colors to get the beautiful look of the cathedral windows. Again, if you need any of those materials, you can go below the video to the description that has listed all the links to purchase online from us at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. As always to you, you can like and subscribe to this YouTube channel, give a little thumbs up on the video and comment below to let us know any changes you made, any suggestions that you have, as well as an opportunity to interact with other viewers, giving them tips and suggestions. Thanks so much for watching everyone and enjoy your own St. Vitus bracelet.